If you've just been diagnosed with this weird funky condition called eustachian tube dysfunction, as well as you just experienced a panic attack, look no further. I've been through it all. I'm a subject case of how this condition can take over the mind and put you into the spiral effect. A lot of you are unaware that this condition can cause a very horribly episode of a panic attack. You start to run around looking for something that you're not sure you're looking for. You start to become this person of worry and stress and trying to count and anticipate your every move, your every footstep. This is all a part of this horrible condition that's not very well and globally talked about. And I want everyone to know that if you're in this position where it seems like even just doing the simplest of things in life seems so incessantly and eagerly exhausting, just know that this is a part of that process. I've been through it all. I can count about three horrible panic attacks that I incurred during this, this journey that I was going through. I don't even know if you would call it a journey because it was not enjoyable, but it was definitely a journey that I needed to take in order to stand in front of you all today and explain to you that this is just a part of the process. No need to panic in a sense. The connection between the inner ear and the brain is such a very delicate system. The inner ear is connected to the brain's connection and the balance that's orienting our overall 3D world. And when this connection gets imbalanced, it puts us into a state of panic due to the, the connections not being uh, a perfect match, I guess you can say. The pressure is not being equalized. You don't realize all of this is happening, but in time, you start to really uh, just overwhelmingly take all these effects and you start to think that there's something more wrong with you than there actually really is. You become a hypochondriac. You start to be this person that thinks you need this and need that and need to go do, do these things and see this person. And you don't actually need to do any of those things. Of course, it's always good to be in touch with a doctor, someone handling your care, specifically an ENT professional. Or if this is a, draw, a jaw structure, be in touch with a dentist or someone that does ortho or things in that nature. But let's talk about the mind for a second. This condition has affected and impacted so many people mentally that I can't even tell you how much is continuously doing so. So many people are in groups every day looking for answers and that remedy and that natural healing. Everyone wants to get back to, their, to the way they used to feel. Well, I want everybody to know you kind of have to go through this situation a little bit before this condition is actually over. We don't realize this, but we're in the driver's seat of ETD. And that sounds odd because you can say, well, no, why would, I, why would all that I feel be my responsibility? Well, let me break a little bit down for you. When you miss opportunities and you miss things that go down, like if you have a scheduled appointment or you have something very important to do and you don't feel well because your ears are not well, when you miss that appointment or you skip that appointment, you're putting a seed into the ground and saying that I can't, I can't uh, go through with it. You're setting yourself up in a slow, progressive manner to not be able to uh, handle that situation. So therefore, what ends up happening is that the brain connects to the fact that you have an inability. And while you're dealing with the symptoms of ETD, you start to layer this panic that's going to happen. And so for every missed opportunity that you cancel on or say you can't do, you're setting yourself up, unfortunately, to have an episode in the future. Not only that, but you're having all these symptoms and things that go on and you're trying to figure out where they're coming from because you don't think you've done, done much to deserve what the body's doing to you. So over a period of time, you start to add all these things up. And as you start to feel, you start to act, you start to believe, you're setting yourself up depending on how you respond to your symptoms. And I was doing the exact same thing. For every symptom I felt, I would run to go see someone else, run to go see someone else, run to go see someone else. And they would tell me ultimately things that didn't really put me in a position to heal. And over time, it just became worse and worse and worse. I started to layer blankets over this problem thick. So it was hard to get through it. What if I told you that if you just took a minute and stopped and realized that it can all go away with a short period of time, starting with the mind, connecting your mind and avoiding the, the overwhelming um, need to run somewhere when you feel something or do something immediate when you feel a certain way that's not normal. If I could just tell all of you out there that are having this imbalance, this, this feeling of uh, confusion, 
If I could just tell you to set yourself back down into a meditative state, start to turn up the, the, the serotonin, the, th the theta, starting to get a good sense of healing in the mind, believing that this is something benign, which it is most of the time. And if you could just get control of the mind again, and it won't drive the body into a sense of panic. Our body is trying to protect us from something unknown that we're not sure is going to occur. And most likely, and most of the time, it does not. I have been suffering with this thing for three years when I was dealing with it. And I just realized probably around the second, almost third year that I was actually driving this thing deeper into my, to the core of my belief system. I was believing that every symptom I feel is something I'm doing wrong and everything I'm doing wrong ultimately ends up to give me the symptom. And so I was driving this non-existent reality through the wall, trying to figure out how to heal myself. When I took my time and stopped and realized that I'm actually a healthy person, I've had my labs done, I've had my doctor screen, screening and had all these ear screenings and all this stuff going on. I realized that it was something that I just needed to get through. For all of you out there that are dealing with this right now, you're going to get through with this. You're going to heal from this, but it has to start with the mind. It has to start with the mind, the belief system. You have to get the belief system in check. Right now, your belief system is a little off. It's a little imbalance, just like your inner ear is a little imbalance. The, the ear is so close and connected to the brain that everything you feel in the ear and, and any thoughts, any uh, situations you put yourself in is going to have a direct impact on those ears. For all of you out there that are in panic or just got done having a panic attack, nothing to be alarmed. Just believe that this whole thing will be over real soon. I'm gonna follow up with a part two on this video here uh, about panic attacks and ETD, and I'm gonna give you a little bit more information about it. But in the meantime, I'm gonna step out of the J1 studio and leave you in good hands with this video. Like anything else, folks, we are here to simply go back to the basics. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you on the next video.